I'm Nick, and this is the Hamilton Ventura. In 2009, Hamilton celebrated the 75th anniversary of Elvis Presley's birth, not with cake, but with two new Ventura models. One a faithful one-to-one -one reproduction of the original Ventura from the 50s, and the other uh, a modern reimagining of the Ventura in black PBD called the XXL, which to my mind pretty much looked like a jet engine. Um, and I can only assume Hamilton decided to name it the XXL because not too long before in 2003, Junkie XXL had released the remix of A Little Less Conversation. As soon as I laid eyes on the Hamilton Ventura, I wanted one. Uh, there's just something about it. I mean, I mean, it's so unique. It's, there's nothing else really like it. Um, unless you sort of, you know, are willing to go back into the vintage catalog. Although this is classed as vintage now. This is from 2009. Um, but like for those Art Deco style watches, you, you do have to go back, you know, and like to the 50s and proper vintage watches. Uh, I can't remember where I first saw one. I just remember thinking, oh, I gotta get one. Being an Elvis fan, the Elvis link was icing on the cake. We're going to have a uh, closer look now at the Ventura. Before we do, we're just going to have a small word from our sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by our sponsor, Cake. Enjoying something nice is an ever-growing difficulty in these hard times we're all facing. Cake allows you to fill your belly, up your sugar intake to get you through the day, all while increasing your waistline. Check out the link in the description to find out where you can buy cake. And thank you to Cake for sponsoring this video. Buy cake today and enjoy the feeling of having some cake. So here we are, Hamilton Ventura. Pretty well known as being worn by Elvis Presley and then later as the watch of choice for the men in black. The Ventura was almost the first electric watch but Hamilton did release an electric watch before the Ventura, the 500. Although you could call it more of a hybrid as it still had a balanced wheel and gears powering the watch. The, uh, the 500 though was plagued with issues as it was rushed to market when Hamilton got with that Elgin were going to release their own electric watch. Hamilton needed to have worried though as the Elgin, which was called the 725, was not only as unreliable as the 500, but more unreliable in that it pretty much put Elgin out of business. Unfortunately as well for Hamilton at the time, the Ventura, although it received a bit of recognition from its stint on Elvis's wrist in the movie Blue Hawaii, Belova had by then released the Aquatron with a tuning fork, which was more accurate and overshadowed Hamilton's accomplishment with their first electric watch. Even more unfortunate for Hamilton, uh, Elvis, of course, being a watch enthusiast himself, picked up an Acatron and was known to wear a very fetching version with an angular, asymmetrical case. That does angular and asymmetrical. Sounds pretty familiar. I picked up this limited edition, reference H2447-1731, from eBay. I've bought a lot of watches on eBay and I've been keeping an eye out for a reasonably priced Ventura but found them selling between 700 to a thousand pounds which is about 800 to 1100 dollars uh, depending on the condition and it was just a bit too much to, as to what I wanted to pay at the time. Then this one popped up, blurry pictures, no box or papers. Seller was based in France, whereas I'm in the UK. Low feedback, you know, all the indications of a really trustworthy seller and a, a good buy. But the price was £220, about $250, and I basically just couldn't resist. After waiting a week or so, what turned up was a cheap bubble lined envelope with the watch head and the bracelet loose inside. On inspection, the watch head had scratches and chunks taken out of the gold plate. The line indices that are meant to sit on the dial, radiating out to those beautiful golden dots, had all fallen off. Uh, well, actually, I say all, I think like two were still left stuck on. 
Uh, the rest were loose on the face and the bracelet was broken. I've bought many watches on eBay and Chrono24 and this was probably the worst a watch has ever arrived. But I took one look at that watch in my hand with its dents and its flaws and its scratches and I just loved it. F love at first sight. And something that really makes this particular limited edition stand out is the fact that it's got a sapphire crystal. Most Hamilton Venturas come with mineral as standard, so having sapphire was a big bonus, and one of the reasons why I particularly went for this watch. The Ventura's case shape really does make it a, uh, a difficult one to measure. Um, it's about 34, I think it was, when you measure it from the end of the, uh, the arrow to the case. Um, but it's one of those kind of watches that you're never going to really know how it's going to wear until you get it on wrist. The watch, when it was originally sold in 2009, uh, was for around about 645 euros. Uh, it's a quartz with Swiss ETA 956.102, power in the Dauphine and red, full red second hand. Yellow gold PVD case and 50 meters of water resistance. Now you can buy a Hamilton Ventura today, pretty much the same model, um, but it set you back about £825, $950, and of course comes with a mineral crystal. And just to make it fun for everyone, 17 mil lug width. And there we have it, the Ventura. It's a, to my mind, a very cool watch but is it a practical watch and that answer would be no it is not a practical watch the crystal although magnificent in its triangular design has no anti-reflective coating um, meaning that it catches the light and when I say the light I mean it catches all the light uh, the Dauphine hands they've got to be you know quite small to be able to fit within that unusual shape dial so even if you can see it past the glare then you can't really really tell the time that well anyway but you know it, you can tell the time you know it still works as a uh, as a watch um uh, it's a great watch i love it um but for practical practicalities this yeah you know you, you want a field watch or something like that of course you know this is more of a, a dress watch rather than uh, an everyday but um, I've always been a big fan of wearing dress watches in all, you know, all occasions, uh, with shorts and t-shirt, you know, on a, on a NATO, which, uh, I know for some that's, uh, a big faux pas, but I like it, you know, I like the juxtaposition of style. But for me, it's not so much about being a, uh, just a watch, it's a, a bit of a link to, to that past as well, um, it's that time, um, Art Deco, always big fan of Art Deco, um, and of course of a man uh, who uh, I, I, I really like the music of Elvis Presley. You know, he used to wear one, um, so there's that link there that that I like. Um, and then, of course, Elvis actually released his last song. Uh, died. Um, he released his last song uh, eight years before I was even born. So uh, yeah, it's nice to have that link. Um, and I think it just oozes, oozes cool, uh, especially on like a, a red leather strap like here, I've got it here, um, just matching that full red seconds hand, uh, but of course that's, uh, that's my opinion. Um, but what do you think? Uh, is the Ventura cool or am I just seriously uncool? Um, it'd be great to hear your comments, um, so if you could let me know in the comments what you think. And if you've enjoyed this video, please think about liking and subscribing. I'm new to this whole YouTube um, review business, so any constructive criticism is uh, most welcome. Um, and so we've come to the end. So it just comes to me to say, far very much. Too much? Probably a bit too much. Well, I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers. Ugly.
googly googly. Jim Jam Jew. I like cake. I bet you do too. <laughs>